everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews and the next installment of our Bra 101 series. Today we're going to talk about the different style lines available in bras. In the last episode we talked about bra anatomy, the different parts of a bra and what they are for. Today I'd like to discuss style options when it comes to bras. A lot of times if you can determine what style suits you or what you like wearing the best, it really narrows down your pattern search. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth video later on about the different patterns that are available, but in this video I will give a few examples of bras that are typical of each style. First up, we have the full cup or full coverage bra. In this type of bra, you would expect to have fabric that covers your entire chest and then forms a typically a V neckline. And the wire extends up a little bit higher in the center front, making that bridge a little bit taller. A good way of telling if you're looking at a full coverage bra is to determine where the apex is of the bra. And the apex is, of course, where your nipple might be. If you have an equal amount of fabric below and above the apex, you're probably looking at a full coverage bra. Another thing to note with full coverage bras is that the straps tend to be a little bit narrower. That is, they attach directly over the apex of the bust. This might be particularly useful if you have sloping shoulders or very narrow shoulders and find that bra straps are constantly following off. Due to the way that full coverage bras are constructed, with the higher wire line, the more narrow strap attachments, these also make a great candidate if you want to turn them into a wireless bra because they should still give you decent support and shaping even though there's no wire. Some example of a full coverage bra would be the Bravo Elite or Bravo Bras from Bravo Bella that can be purchased through bra builders. We have the Classic from Pinup Girls, the Angie from Beware, and K3594 from Quicksil. Now this is not an exhaustive list of all of the full coverage bras, just the ones that I think are a good example of it. As you can see from these different bras, just because it's full coverage does not mean that it has to be frumpy. There are tons of options when you're making it for yourself. Next up, we have the balconette or half cup style. Personally, these are my favorite ones to make. With a balconette style bra, it's typified by a slightly lower wire in the center front, straps that have moved out onto your shoulders a bit further, and less coverage. Somewhere between half to three quarters of the bust should be covered in this style bra. Ideally, a balconette bra should lift the girls up kind of like a balcony and give you a little bit curvier, sexier of a shape. These types of bras work better for more revealing necklines, especially ones that are wider apart. But because those straps are extending further out onto the shoulders, if you are particularly narrow shoulder or sloping, you may have some difficulty getting these to fit properly. You may need to alter your patterns to include a racer back or even crossing your, your straps in the back to keep these staying up. Some examples of a balconette or half cup style are the Emerald Erin Black Beauty, the Cloth Habit Harriet, the Ruby from Pinup Curls, and the Maya Bra from AFI Atelier. One quick note, the Maya Bra is a free pattern available for download, but it does not include full pattern instructions. So I don't necessarily recommend this if you're just starting out with bra making because it's missing a lot of that pertinent information. Next up, we have a plunge bra. Now this one has the lowest wire line of the ones we've shown. So you have full coverage and then balconette and then plunge. A plunge style bra will have that distinct V neckline, very similar to the full coverage bra, but then of course it is dropped much lower so that allows you to wear more revealing tops. One sort of trick that I like to do with my plunge style bras is actually narrow the bridge a little bit and that pushes everything more towards the center front and can give you a cheat of a little bit more cleavage if that's something that you're going for. I particularly like making plunge style bras when my weight drops down a little bit. I don't have a lot of squishy bits on my sternum and I can find that day style or full coverage wires might be a little bit uncomfortable if my weight drops below a certain level. And the plunge wire, because it's so much lower, can be more comfortable on my sternum. This is also something to keep in mind if you have some abnormalities in the way that your sternum is shaped and you might be a little bit more barrel chested or pigeon chested. Some examples of a plunge bra are the Lansdowne bra from Orange Lingerie and the Sherry bra from Pinup Girls. So far we've looked at lots of different cup styles and if we overlay those on top of each other we can see that the main difference has to do with both the wire line and the position of the straps. 
As I had mentioned before, when we're bra making, we're allowed to sort of throw out the rules a little bit. So if you prefer a much higher wire line, like a full coverage bra, but you want a wider neckline, you can certainly alter your pattern to look like that. We can mix and match as much as we want. In addition to style differences in the cups, we also have the ability to look at our band. In the last episode, I talked about the differences between a partial band bra and a full band bra. Another thing we can look at is a long line bra. There are a couple patterns that are for long line bras, like the Cindy from Ululu, the Esplanade bra from Orange Lingerie, and the Labellum bra from Lily PA Design. But don't be afraid, it's easy to turn any full band bra into a long line bra. That's gonna be a tutorial for a little bit later in the series, but I can show you an example here of where I have turned my Black Beauty bra into a long line version. Up until this point, we've talked about wired bras mainly, but I don't wanna discount wireless bras. They certainly have their time and their place. As I had mentioned previously, wires are the best way to get lift, support, and separation. When we're looking at unwired or soft cup bras, you do sort of have to make some sacrifices in order to get that. The Ingrid from Pinup Girls is a good example. This bra does give you some separation and lift, but you'll notice that it also has significantly more coverage than a lot of the bras that we've looked at. As the bra sewing community has grown, I've definitely seen more entrance into this bralette category. It is oftentimes something that people want to start out with because it seems a little bit less intimidating, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. A wired bra and an unwired bra are practically the same to sew. The only difference is the underwire channeling. So if difficulty is the only thing holding you back, I say go for the bra you really want to wear. Some examples of unwired bras are the Poppy Bralette from House Morgan, the Lotus Bralette from P Lily PA Designs, the Watson Bra from Cloth Habit, and of course the Barrette and Sierra Bra from Madeline. Those last two from Madeline are free patterns, but just know that you are looking at a limited size range. Well, that's everything I have for you guys today. I hope you found this information useful and you're getting some ideas of the type of bras that you would like to make. Be sure to come back next time where we'll take a deep dive into the different patterns available from all the companies. And if you guys are interested in bra making, be sure to hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon so you know every time I upload a new video. See you next time. Take care. Oh,